All right, Carmen San Diego, welcome back. And in this video, I'm going to continue making my views or designing my web page. So for this home page, instead of just saying this will be a list of all albums, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to connect to a database, pull out all of the albums that we have and display them right here. Now, once we have all the albums listed, the user is going to be able to click one and it's going to take you to that view that we made in the last video, a more detailed view of that single album. So let's go ahead and do that. So we actually don't even need this since we're not going to have a big giant heading on there. All right. So the first thing that we need to do is in our view, since we're going to be working with album information, we need from models import album. Now, if we were going to display song information on here, we would have to import that too. But remember, this is just for displaying the albums themselves. They don't get more information until they click another link. So what I'm actually going to do is I am going to take HTML and make it a variable because I'm going to be creating each link one at a time. And instead of just typing everything into this HTTP response function. I think it'll get cluttered if I just have a bunch of HTML in there. So I think it'll be a little bit cleaner this way. So right now we're not returning any HTML, but we'll build it in just a second. But before that, what I can do is this. We need to connect to the database and get all of the albums. Now, this is the exact same as when I talked to you guys about using the database API. So I am just going to make a variable called all albums, and this is going to store the results of that database call. And do you guys remember how to do that? You just write album objects all. So again, just like whenever we were using the terminal in the Python interpreter, what this is going to do is it's going to connect to our database, look at the albums table and get all of the objects in there. So all of the albums, pretty sweet, eh? All right, so now that we have a list of all the albums, we need to loop through them so we can access them one by one. So I'll say for album and all albums. And for each one, we're just gonna wanna build a link, some HTML. So the first thing I'm actually gonna do is just, instead of just making everything a href, all that stuff, I just wanna make the URL first. So remember the URL structure of an individual album is this. music slash the album ID followed by this last forward slash. So what I can do in that case is just keep that string. And now I want to go ahead and put album dot ID. Now it's going to give me a little warning because the album ID, this is an actual integer. So right now we're trying to append strings with integers so I actually just need to convert this to a string. So again, depending on what current album we are currently looping through, this is gonna be music slash one, music slash five, music slash 10, whatever the album ID is. So now I can go ahead and make the actual link and let me just go ahead and do this. All right, so since this is gonna be sent in the actual HTML response, what we give back, we can just go ahead and do something like this. I actually just like to code it like this. I'll say title A and let's add a line break at the end. And that way every link is gonna be on um, a new line instead of just, you know, kind of reading it like a one entire sentence. All right, so this is a structure right here. We're just gonna stick the URL so I'll just write something like this. URL. And actually for the title, um, I don't want to put the URL. Let's go ahead and put the um, album title. All right, so I know I was said that I'm gonna have the album logo there, but I just want to put the title instead. So now let's go ahead back to our views and check it out. So again, what we did is we connected to the database and we got all of the albums. Now for each album, what we did is we looped through it and made it a link and just displayed it 
in our HTTP response. Now hopefully whenever we click these, check it out, it takes you to that detail page. All right, mate, this is looking sweet, looking awesome. But you know what, I gotta tell you guys a little story. So I was working on this and preparing for this tutorial and then my front end developer came in and she just, you know, lives under my house and she goes, whoa, whoa, Bucky, what's this? I go, this is the music site I was telling you about and she's actually supposed to be designing everything for me all the CSS and HTML making everything look pretty and she's like whoa no 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 you gotta change this I don't know Python I'm like what and she's like no I only know HTML and Angular and SCSS I'm like just learn it then I'm, and she's like you're telling me I have to put all this HTML code right in these Python functions and I was like yeah and she's like Ugh, I quit so we got a little problem here. All of our HTML, if we do it this way, it's all jumbled in with Python. And I mean, for me, if I was just making my own website, this would be perfectly fine. But if you ever work for a company in the proper structure to set up a Django project, what you actually need to do is you need to take your HTML and you need to separate it away from your Python logic. So ideally you should have very, very little, if none, HTML code in your Python views. So this is actually the proper way to connect the database, but whenever you wanna display HTML, there is a much better way. So now that we understand the concept behind it, in the next tutorial, I'm gonna show you the proper way to separate your HTML and your web design out from your backend Django logic.